I've said it before and I'll say it again, print on demand is such a great business model for starting a business from home without a lot of money down, but it can turn into a little bit of a discouraging journey if you keep listing products that aren't selling. And so today what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through an ultimate research guide so that way you can learn how to research different markets, verticals, and products that are selling well across the ecosystem. So that way you can take away some of that guesswork on what would perform well so you can just jump right towards starting and selling bestsellers. I'm gonna nerd out today. That is one of my favorite things to do is look at the data and try to get a better understanding on what is performing well and how I might be able to incorporate those into my shop. It is a huge way that I've been able to list bestsellers and list products that end up getting sales within the first couple of weeks is understanding what types of search terms are trending and then making products that fit that mold. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through my three-step process that I literally utilize every time I list products to show you guys exactly how I take a broader look at the overarching market. So what is happening on Google search, diving down into what is happening on a marketplace like Etsy, where we can get really juicy details on which products are selling well, which tags are there opportunities present in. And then lastly, how can we understand which types of products are performing well in print on demand and potentially incorporate those into our shop? To go through this process, I figured it would make the most sense to choose a niche that exists out there and literally just start understanding what that space looks like. I posted a few videos talking about different trends that I think are gonna be really popular for Q1, as well as a Pinterest predicts video that walks through what Pinterest is expecting to be very popular in 2025. In both of those, videos and I will link them below. One was overlapping and that was skiing and mountain towns. And so I want to do some more research now knowing that we've made this observation that mountain towns skiing are very popular in 2025. I want to drill down to get a better understanding on what I might want to launch in that space and how I would do that. The first tool that I'm going to use, you've probably guessed it, and that is Google Trends. Google Trends is an amazing tool that basically allows you to get a better understanding on what people are searching for across Google, which is across the web. It also will allow you to type in specific search terms to get a better pulse check on what types of long tail keywords are trending in that space. And just in general, what does the trend look like for specific demand related to that term? If you go over to the homepage, this is where you're gonna be able to actually plug in the specific term that you're interested in. And I am going to type in ski shirt. It's gonna automatically default to the past day, which is something that we do not want. And I'm gonna go back five years just to get an understanding on how this term has trended. This is already really cool information. It basically shows that Ski shirt tends to tick up in the winter months, which is not surprising. These peaks have been increasing year over year. So it's a good showcase that we are on the right track with the type of trend that we're looking at. This uptick here is the highest that it's ever been. So this is data is viewed on an index basis, which basically means that if you see 100% in the last five years, that means that this is the highest point that it has been at in the last five years. If you come down to the 50% mark, it's showing that this is about 50% of the volume that they've seen in the the time period that we're looking at. So in general, interest for this term over time has been increasing with a huge peak in the last uh, month, essentially. As you scroll down, you'll be able to see more data on different topics and queries that are trending in this space. And you kind of start to scroll through to get an understanding on what might be flowing into this data. So off the bat, you'll be able to see different things here. And I think it's interesting. Some of these terms are gonna be helpful, other times they're not. I think it's interesting to see that this says Hellstar shirt. I didn't really know what that was, but when I look it up, it looks to have more of this like vintage thrasher, um, yeah, vintage vibe to it, which we've seen be really popular in the last year or so. And so never saying to copy, do not copy, but it gives you an idea of certain design styles that might be performing well. I mean, these t-shirts are selling for $160 a t-shirt. Um, so we would not want to copy these, but it might give some inspiration to how we would use design software like Kittle to make similar designs. Now, I absolutely love Google Trends. Um, sometimes the data is really valuable. Sometimes it is a little bit more broad. 
Another really cool tool that is actually tied to Google Trends is going to be a tool called Glimpse. Glimpse is basically a website extension that allows you to get even more rich insights from Google. You get 10 searches per month, so you have to be kind of strategic about how you utilize these searches because otherwise it's kind of expensive. I think it's like $60 per month. But what you can do is you can plug in that same search term. So I did ski t-shirt and it'll show you even more specifics on how this data is trending and the kind of trend line associated with that. Additionally, it'll also give you more of the long tail keywords and more of that data. And so when we scroll down here, we will see that these are the top long tail keywords. They're in order of how much search volume is coming into Google. Vintage ski t-shirt is the number one long tail keyword as well as jet ski t-shirt, retro ski shirt, funny ski t-shirt. So these are all things that I would be taking note of, of how I might wanna make my designs as well as different types of tags that I would be adding onto my listings to make sure that we are showing up for these high traffic terms that are more specific than just a broad term like ski t-shirt. I also love the idea of location-based terms. So you can see Aspen ski t-shirt, Swiss ski t-shirt. I think where this can be really powerful is if you can kind of cross niche these and do a vintage Aspen ski t-shirt and a vintage Swiss ski t-shirt. So that way you're really making something super unique that fits the mold of multiple different buckets that would appeal to a wide audience. So that is the broad umbrella. The next step is going to be getting nitty gritty with a platform like Etsy. So that way you can see how you can compete against other listings that are already on Etsy. And the best way that you can analyze Etsy data and understand what is happening on Etsy is to download and utilize a tool called Everbee. Everbee is also a web extension that attaches to your Chrome browser or whatever browser that you use that allows you to search for terms on Etsy and then analyze to see how many monthly sales there doing. It is a complete unlock for understanding what is happening in the market and utilizing that data to then apply to your own listings. So I 100% recommend utilizing Everbee. And I also recommend upgrading to their growth plan so that way you have unlimited searches. Otherwise, you'll end up running out of searches. And this is one where we would really want to be using it daily. I'm in here literally daily trying to find what different types of data I can utilize for my next bestseller. So what I've done is I've typed in ski shirt, similar to what I have done on Google. And then once you have the Everbee extension, you can hit product analytics. And what that will allow you to do is analyze the entire Everbee database so that we can pull in all listings. Now, product analytics is going to be the area that I err on where I'm gonna spend the most of my time. But another cool button in here that I'll start with is actually going to be tag analytics. So tag analytics is basically going to tell you a mixture of how much search volume there is for that specific tag, as well as the competition, AKA the number of listings for that tag. And so you can get a good understanding on which tags have a lot of volume, but not as many listings and vice versa. Different tags may have millions of different searches, but they also have millions of different listings. So those are more competitive. So I like to come into here and basically do that exact same and sort by volume. So the volume is basically going to show me how many times this tag or this term is searched and how many listings you're competing with in that space. Ideally, you find something with a lot of search volume and a little bit of competition but it is difficult to do that because all of us are trying to basically offer the best type of product for our customer. So it's important to come in here and continue to iterate and find those places that you can have the best listing in this potentially less competitive space. So search volume, anything under you know 30 is going to be very light, but still is something that if you have a product that you can list in this area or add this tag to your listing, gives you a better chance of competing because there's not nearly as many listings throwing their hat in the ring. So things that we just kind of talked about, Utah, Colorado, Aspen, Park City, Utah shirt, where there are some search volume for these terms, but not as much competition. 
Obviously, you still a lot of competition, but that doesn't mean these are good listings. That just means that they're listings. We also have things like gift for skier that I really like, matching ski trip, where the volume isn't crazy high yet, but we're also about to enter that peak season. And this is based off of a monthly volume. So they're gonna blend that out over time. That doesn't mean that they're actually getting 25 views this month. That means that over the last several of months, that's been the average. And so most likely this is going to have closer to 200 views for the seasonality that it is peaking. And so really good ones to not miss out on, even though it doesn't look like crazy volume right now. After you have an understanding on the tags, that's when I would go back over to product analytics. I always like to sort this by monthly revenue to get an understanding on which listings have the most monthly revenue and then keep an eye on the listing age to make sure that you have a good understanding on how long this listing has been live. Again, if something has been live for 12 months, it's likely that since ski season only is like four or five months of the year rounded out, that this hasn't actually been doing $4,300 every single month. There have been months where it has done $10,000 plus per month. And it really only takes one really great listing to start making $1,000 per month in passive, passive income. Um, and it's fun to see here that we're already seeing this cross niching occur. So we're seeing that the ski niche a price ski is popping in for the bachelorette niche. And so if there are any other niches that you operate in that you might be able to add in skiing, that is a really good opportunity given that we're already seeing that data flow through. So things to keep in your mind as you're doing this research, you can also see custom family ski t-shirts, just funny ski goggles, smile hoodie. This kind of fits that like funny ski t-shirt idea that we saw trending on Google. So this is another one here, location-based, very specific. If we duplicated this type of theming and did it for all of the different ski parks, another good kind of way to start framing your mind for trends and verticals like this. Another great hack that I like doing on Etsy in addition to utilizing Everbee, which is the ultimate hack, is trying to get an understanding on what types of mock-ups are performing well. Uh, there is this long-standing hack that if you search a term and you hit all filters, you can click the option at the bottom here that says star seller. Once the star seller items update, you can go up to the URL and basically change star over to best. And what that essentially does is it makes sure that any of the products now that we are showing are going to be trending now, popular now, or best sellers. So you can kind of understand what is popular in the mock-up space, as well as just get a pulse check on, in addition to the highest moving listings in the past year, which ones most recently are starting to tick up. So there are some really beautiful ones in here that are definitely inspired and could be done as print on demand. Obviously do not copy, um, but gives you an idea on what is performing and how you might be able to get your listings to stand out. The last research method that I'm going to mention is actually housed on Printify. So we've understood the macro environment. We've gone a little bit more narrow and we've understood what's happening on a marketplace like Etsy and actually understood sales figures, which is crazy. Thank you, Everbee. And now we're gonna go over to Printify, which will give us a product level analysis. Now in Printify, they just launched this new analytics platform in the last year or so called Insights. And what this will do is it takes all the data that Printify has on shipping millions and millions of products every year and tells us which of those are trending higher every week on Printify. So you know which products people are liking and shipping and how you might be able to incorporate those into your shop. So if you go over to Insights and you hit Best of Printify, you'll be able to see all of their products listed here and their rank for the week, their movement for the week, and their movement for the year. So some of the things that I'm constantly looking at are what are the top 10, and what are the ones that have moved a lot year over year? Now, keep in mind, I'm filming this at the very tail end of December. And so right now it's a little bit of a tricky time to look at this data because it's very Q4 centric. So week over week, it might look like ornaments, but in January, it's definitely not gonna be ornaments. So less of a something that I would say, we're gonna analyze this data, you and me today, but for you to continue, if you utilize Printify, come into here, take a look at it and see which products are seeing crazy movement. Tough phone cases is one where I'd be like, oh, do I need to start listing tough phone cases? Because they're 13 out of all their products. They've moved up week over week and year over year, they're up 41. This could be because they're new as well. 
Um, but those are the types of things where I would keep my eye on those movements to see how I can hit that wave as well. Call out with Printify Insights. You have to have at least 20 orders per month. So if you have not hit that threshold, then this will not populate, but you don't need this. It's more of another thing if you were looking to expand and if you get designs that are working, then I would utilize this to say, okay, great. What else can I slap that design on that is trending well, that will take that design to the next level and my shop to the next level. That's it. That is how I literally go from point A to point point B to understand a specific industry and how I would list that. Please like and subscribe if this has been helpful and I will catch you on the next one.